welcome back to Review Crew. I'm Tim. And I'm Dylan. On today's episode, we're going to review what is undoubtedly the most popular movie of 2021, Spider-Man No Way Home. Gabe and Bean are going to do On the Spot to review Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Here's the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man, we started getting some visitors. every universe. Hello, Peter. You're not Peter Parker. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, seriously, what's your actual name? There are others out there. We need to send them back. So, Scooby-Doo this crap. You know, all this is kind of your mess. I know a couple of magic words myself, starting with the word please. Please, Scooby-Doo this crap. You're flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts. What do you mean? They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. Look, there has to be another way. There isn't. They're a danger to our universe. You're not gonna take this away from me. Peter. You're struggling. Everything you want, while the world tries to make you choose. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. Okay, so first off, this is a warning for spoilers. Uh, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in this video, so if you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home yet, please go do so, and then you know you can come back and watch the review. So, uh, Tim, uh, going into this movie, I gotta be honest, I was very skeptical. The trailers I watched, and I was just like, hmm, looks like they're gonna be jumbling a lot in this one, but. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, this is a great, not only a great Spider-Man movie, but a great superhero movie in general. What, what do you think? Yeah, I had fun with it. I mean, yeah, the, my, my initial reactions on the trailers, like, I mean, you had those shots with, like, that revealed about who the villains were going to be and, like, who yeah. would be playing the villains. And so that was kind of a big hype moment. A, a lot of people of in my community, you know, in my circle were kind of excited about that. And I was excited about that, too, because I grew up with those old movies, too. Um, but... Yeah, I was I was excited going into it, and I came out of it. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Great movie. I had a lot. I had a good time. I am not as, pod like I didn't have as positive a reaction to it as a lot of people did. Like a lot of people were saying, it's like the greatest movie they've seen all year, and they were like, oh, this is probably one of the best MCU movies, which is fine. It just kind of for me was more of a middle of the road MCU movie, but I still had a lot of fun with it, and yeah. it was a great movie that like you know it was a good end of the year cap off kind of thing. Yeah, I, I just. For me, being a huge Spider-Man fan, I just mm -hmm. I just had so much fun with it. Like just you know seeing seeing the three of them on screen together, you know Toby, Andrew, and Tom. It's just it was unbelievable. Like I literally couldn't believe what I was seeing on the screen. It was yeah, you know. Yeah, that's like if I I'm not like as big of a Spider-Man fan as a lot of my friends are. I know mm -hmm. they're like huge. They've read the comics and everything, so they're like really big into Spider-Man, and that's awesome. Like for like if I was a character that I was that passionate about, to see that on screen would be incredible. And I still like Spider-Man, and yeah, seeing all three of them together, I mean. 
come on, everybody was kind of saying, like, we know it's going to happen, yeah. but they hadn't confirmed it, so there was a little bit of skepticism going in, but then all three of them showed up, and, I mean, their scenes together, that dynamic between the three yeah. of them nailed it. It felt like Toby and Andrew, even though it's been years since they played the character, they still, like, had the same energy to it as they had Toby, I mean, 20 years ago at this point. It's it's crazy. I thought they were fantastic together, and that was really a highlight of the movie. Yeah, for me. I'm, I'm so happy that Andrew Garfield got to came back. He, he just kind of stole the show for me when he came because I like wow I, I missed him like literally I didn't realize I missed him so much like, absolutely you know. yeah I mean he was so great I, I never understood the hate really like I know the movies yeah. themselves were kind of a little on the lesser side but I thought Andrew Garfield's portrayal of Spider-Man was one of the best because he was so yeah. quippy and so agile in his movements so I was great to see him. it was great to see him get another chance honestly now there's a lot of talk about him getting a third movie maybe but even if that doesn't happen this was a great another outing for him and I think that all three of them did a great job was Andrew your favorite out of the three you think um well I'm a Toby guy liver guy oh, yeah, but you yeah. know they all like honestly that biggest part of the movie that I loved is that even though they're all in the movie it still really feels like Tom's film like, yeah they really focus on the story and the emotional aspect of being Spider-Man, which is just what I, that, that's what I thought they were lacking the first two Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, but now like the third one, I just it felt like the great great ending to his origin story, if you want to say, you know. Absolutely, I agree. That was kind of the one of the points I walked out of. I was thinking this is kind of the first two movies were fun, like Spider-Man films, yeah. where he kind of showed like you know he showed off his powers a little bit and he defeated some of the bad guys. But he never really felt like like Spider Man. Like he was still mm -hmm. kind of like a, he was still a high school kid. You know, he kind of was just like, oh, cool kid with powers, which is fun, yeah. kind of immature. But this film, like especially with that ending where he made the big choice to just you know to reverse the spell and have you know everyone forget who he was entirely, yeah. just as Peter Parker, uh, that was a really mature decision and a really tough decision that a lot of people couldn't have made. So I thought that's where he really kind of became Spider Man in the end, yeah. which was really cool to see, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Yeah, I'm hoping there's more. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we, we're, we're in for more with Tom Holland. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where his future in Marvel is. But, you know, like, again, at the end, it feels like he's finally becoming Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, after, what, five appearances in movies? It's crazy. It's just like he's finally hitting that role. Absolutely. And, That's yeah, crazy. I'm just excited to see what happens next. For me, I don't know what happened with your theater, but it kind of felt like an event. Like, people oh, were yeah. going, were ballistic. Like, it was actually crazy in my theater. There was so much screaming. And I'm just happy because I know this movie is being, like, kind of, everyone's saying it's kind of bringing the theater experience back. Like, it's kind of credited as doing that. So mm -hmm. I'm just excited that people are still very passionate about going to the theater for, you know, movies of this caliber. Yeah, that's like one of the great things about the MCU is that every movie there is basically an event. I mean, it yeah. brings the crowd together. And with so many streaming services coming out now, like people are more and more, there, there, there's no reason to go to the theater. You can just stay home and watch every movie there. Yeah. But like really the theater experience is just something that can't be replicated. And it's great that the MCU is pulling people together for that. So I thought, I think that's a great point uh, that the movie, it, it did really well. It brought people together and everybody was excited to see it. Yeah, totally. Like, again, like, even, I, I'm so happy that the rumors didn't really, you know, get leaked, even though there were some kind of leakage. But, you know, I never truly knew that, you know, my favorite Spider-Man would be back and Andrew would be back. And, you know, just seeing it was just one of the best feelings ever. Like, I was just, I, I was so happy to see it. Like, it was awesome. And there were a lot, of, a lot of, the movie knew what it was doing. It had a lot of fan service moments that I think yeah. made the audience super excited. I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts on kind of some of that, like, blatant fan service was. Like, there were a couple quotes, like, from, like, yeah. Willem Dafoe, where he had in the first movie, where it was like, oh, I recognize that quote. Like, that's from the first, like, you know, his first outing. Um, and some of them, for me, were kind of like, ah, oh, that's, I don't know. It's, it's cool, like, I know that quote, but it's, it, I know that moment. It's a little weird, though. It feels a little off right now. But there were other moments where I was, I was super excited. Just, like, you know, yeah. I, it was really cool. Like, just Doc, Dr. Octopus and a lot of his moments kind of reconnecting with that original story. Yeah. So it's, curious, it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy because like I feel like they really added to a lot of the villains like Doc, mm -hmm. Doc Ock they definitely added to his character and mm -hmm. what we haven't seen him in like 15 years mm -hmm. it's just they actually added more layers to each of them like Willem Dafoe you, you get more insight into that character which is just it's crazy to me after so much time they could really just hop back into it and we could you know get more about their story and just understand more about their their character yeah absolutely yeah. all right well we'll be right back after this <laughs> Well, 
Welcome back. We're continuing our discussion about Spider-Man No Way Home. Tim, I'm really curious, where, where do you place this in your ranking for the entire MCU? Yeah, so MCU, I, I, I followed it for a long time, ever since Iron Man, um, and I, I, I've loved most of their movies. Um, I gotta say, uh, I don't know, anything post-Endgame for me is a little bit lower, just because I liked that Infinity Saga, I thought Endgame was a good wrap-up. I kind of yeah. tapped out a little bit with the MCU interest after that movie. I know that's not fair to say, because there's been plenty of great projects after that. Um, but it definitely is kind of not on the lower side because it's probably the best out of the post Endgame projects that I've seen. So I'll probably it's probably pretty middle of the road for me, kind of mm -hmm. similar in vain to maybe uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think like a Doctor Strange kind of thing, or maybe uh, like like a, the Second Avengers kind of a big moment, but like more middle of the road, like you know right there in the center. Um, it's a good movie. It's a lot of fun. It's just, I, I'm, I recognize I have a little bit of bias because anything post-Endgame for me is, does feel a little cheaper than anything that we saw in the 2010s in that saga. What about yeah. you? Uh, it's funny you say that because I feel like I have just as much bias, just a little differently. I'm just being such a big Spider-Man fan that mm -hmm. I am. I put this movie high in my mm -hmm. MCU ranking. I'd probably say it's, it's got to be top five for me just because I, I can't, that feeling of just seeing... My favorite, well, my, my favorite superhero comeback, Toby, and then Andrew come back. It's just one of the best feelings I'll ever have in a theater, without a doubt. So right as of now, I'm definitely gonna have to rewatch it a few more times. But as of now, probably top five, maybe even top three. But in relation to Spider-Man movies, it's still not my favorite. It's definitely my favorite of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, without mm -hmm. a doubt. But Spider-Man Two is still my favorite. Mm -hmm. it will, it's always the one to you know point at and be like, that's a good Spider-Man movie. But that being said, it's definitely three or two on my list of Spider-Man movies. It, it's either you know Spider-Man one and you know this movie are laying it out for the number two spot. What, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with your point. Like out of the Tom Holland movies, I think this is my favorite. The other two had lower stakes, which isn't anything against them. It's just that I mean, with a higher stakes movie, there's there's yeah. more emotion. You're more invested in the movie. Um, and like I said before, I really like that Tom Holland kind of. I think for this, it was it was a moment where he became Spider-Man. He, he mm -hmm. transitioned out of that immature state. Uh, so that really propelled it to the top of the list for me in terms of Tom Holland, Spider-Man projects. Um, and then in terms of just like Spider-Man movies in general, I think, yeah, definitely uh, higher up on the list. Um, Spider-Man, I think Spider-Man 1 is my top, just the, that original Tobey Maguire one, because that was the first one that got me invested in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And I love Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. I think that yeah. it is like an incredible performance, and he replicated that performance wonderfully great, here yeah. in this movie too. Um, so that was great to see. Uh, so overall, yes, de definitely best Tom Holland for me. Um, out of all the Spider-Man movies though, probably, yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, high up on that list, four, three, somewhere in that range. But those original Tobey movies kind of stand out as the top two to me. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. I, I like this movie. Uh, there was a lot of great uh, moments in it, and I'm excited actually to see like where Tom Holland's Spider-Man goes from here. Because now it's kind of a clean slate for him. At the end of the movie, you know, he's he's been forgotten as Peter Parker, um, but Spider-Man still he's still active as that hero. So there's a lot of directions that the MCU could go in with Tom Holland Spider-Man. I'm, I'm curious. What are you yeah. thinking? I just personally hope they don't retract on any of this. Mm -hmm. I really hope that Ned, MJ, everyone just always forgets him. Because for me, I prefer Spider-Man being that loner. He could be anybody. He doesn't really reveal his identity. I mean, it happens, but it's just like if the whole world knows, like where's the fun in that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What's the point of the mask at that point? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, kind of, it would feel cheap if like kind of it was, yeah. oh, you know, they did actually end up remembering him because then it cheapens his de decision and kind yeah. of that transition into maturity that he has at the end of the movie. And so if they kind of just keep it as everybody's forgotten him, and now he's got to kind of just, yeah, like you said, he's the every, he could be anybody. Um, there's a lot of, yeah, great potential for that character. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Totally, totally. And lastly, I just like, like you were saying before, the performance in this, performances in this movie are actually, some of them are incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually think Tom Holland did an outstanding job in this movie. Like, definitely his best outing as Spider-Man. That scene with him in May is just gut-wrenching. Like, actually very, very well done. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, this is a star-studded cast. I mean, you know, Tom Holland's great, Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe, Marissa Tomei, they all knock it out of the park. Everyone's great. Everyone knows who their characters are at this point. They've yeah. had time to refine them, and they really did a fantastic job. And so that, I think that was probably one of the high points of the movie for me. And Tom Holland, I mean, everybody loves him now as Spider-Man, so uh, everyone's just rooting for him to go in a good direction. Totally. 
Same here. Um, so Tim, uh, final thoughts. Uh, what do you rank this movie? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this movie a healthy IGN seven out of ten. Um, I think you know it's a fun movie. Tom Holland's got a great performance, great emotional moments uh, for the characters. Um, the, that fan service did feel a little bit cheap to me, and I am kind of you know again my post end game bias. I'm kind of pulled in a little bit and dropped this movie a little lower for me, but it still had a lot of good moments and I had a lot of fun with it. So go kind of, you know, healthy seven out of 10. What about you? Okay, so for me as a Spider-Man movie, this is a, at least a nine, 10 out of 10, just because mm -hmm. I feel like this is the ultimate celebration of this character. But yeah, as, uh, uh, being, that being said, I feel like a nice 8.5 out of 10 uh, actual movie. So yeah, I loved it. Like, I thought it was great. Uh, that being said, Everyone, please go check out Spider-Man No Way Home if you haven't already, and we'll be right back after this. And that's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. Check out this week's screening hosted by University Union, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Also, be sure to check out Friday Night Movie Night on OTN. This week's movies are The Brain That Wouldn't Die, Father's Little Dividend, and Little Shop of Horrors. See you next week.